All right, welcome everyone to the show. Jeanette Byro here. I'm a medium and a channeler. And as always, thank you so much for checking out the podcast. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. I hope you enjoy and you picked an absolutely perfect time to check it out first and foremost. Now, for those of you that have been supporting my podcast for the last few years, thank you so much. This just is so much fun for me to do. So I have to give you my gratitude, truly. So today we are talking about the July energy update. Spirit has so much to say about this and there is even a ton of symbology in the amount of things they're talking about. So first of all, let's talk about numbers. Number signs have been big and bold right now for a lot of people. Whether you're seeing 111, 222, 555, 777, anything repeated in threes essentially. And it's literally all the numbers. I've talked to a lot of people and many people are seeing such variations in the numbers. I myself have been seeing a lot of fours, a lot of fives, a lot of sevens. I know others that are seeing threes and some are seeing twos and nines and eights. I mean, it's everywhere. But the key part of that is that it comes in sets of three. There's a power in three. And so Spirit, first of all, wanted to talk about this power of the Trinity within the nine points they want to talk about today. And in the nine points they want to talk about today, they're like, notice how that is three sets of threes. So we are emphasizing this extra idea of triangulation and triangulation that connects to the culmination or the ending of cycles, beginning of new cycles that we often get with the number nine. Okay, so nines and threes are really going to stick out, um, whether it be the number nine or three or repeating patterns of things happening in threes, okay? Because the power of the Trinity, they say, they're they saying is moving through mind, body, and spirit. So our mind is going through transformations. Our body is going through transformations. Our spirit is transmuting and transforming things within so we can be more harmonized within that Trinity, which is why signs and symbols happening in threes, repeated numbers happening in threes, anything in threes right now, is really gonna to help to reassure you that you're on track. And that's one of the biggest things they wanted to bring in right now, is that if you look to be a very keen observer in your world, you will notice if you are on track or not, and notice the signs and synchronicities to help reinforce if you are on track. You will feel it within, you will see it in your external environment, and you will be receiving messages and guidance that yes, in fact, you are on track again. That would be a way to observe it in threes, mind, body, spirit. So the next uh, point they wanted to talk about is clear division between 3D and 5D. We're going to be noticing this more and more. And there are a lot of people that are already, already noticing this. I myself am noticing it big time. And it's this clear division between 3D reality and 5D reality. So 3D reality we could compare to say the old program and 5D reality is a new program, right? 3D reality is the old template, 5D reality is a new template. So however you want to see that, it's not one better than the other, they are just different. And the reason why they're different is they are different in perspective, in compassion, in big picture thinking with a positive spin. Because in a 5D reality, if we're looking at the world, through a 5D lens, we're going to see <clears throat> infinite possibilities for growth and goodness. If we only stick in a very generalized, this is just so I can make a point, generalized 3D view, we will see limitation, fear narrative, and um, just repeated cyclical nature of things, right? So with this clear division, you could have two people looking at the exact same thing. Maybe it's an idea. Maybe it's um, a new construct. No matter what it is, you could have these two people looking at it. One will see it in a negative. One will see it in a positive. Or one will see it in a very 3D rooted thinking it's only within known parameters where somebody in 5D would look at it and be like, hmm, okay, how can we make this different? What have we not thought of yet? How can we be creative in this to make it into something that is more applicable to now, to forward movement? That's kind of this difference. And so if you look at the, the world around you and the people in the world around you, 
that's how you'll start to see who's kind of sitting in a more 5D frequency versus who's in a very 3D frequency. Again, one isn't better than the other. The frequency from which someone views the world is simply an indicator of where they're at in their journey. And again, one is not better than the other. Somebody in 5D isn't better than somebody in 3D. They just are seeing things differently. And somebody in 3D will move through the process of eventually reaching open-minded thinking. And just like, uh, was it last week when the that Rainbow Council came through in one of my channelings or the Wednesday Wisdom, and they talked about how all of us are like colors of the rainbow, all vibrating in different frequencies and moving through the progression of the rainbow in our own individualized time. So when we hear this clear division of 3D and 5D, that's a clear division in what we notice, but it's not a clear division in picking a side and being better than another. That's not at all how spirit wishes to say it. They just wish to show the evolution that we are in fact seeing on our planet, but then also for us to have a beautiful open heart of compassion to meet people where they're at and not force opinions or ideas on anyone, but also not cower or deny our own opinions and ideas just because they don't relate to somebody else's. So something to be said for that, because if you can really hold your own space, and if your space is, listen, I'm in 3D, that's where I want to stay, these are my limitations, this is how I see the world, and this makes me feel good, then that's great. That's all that matters. But we will notice this significant change in the collective energy of those around us in 3D and 5D. Now, another way we may really notice this within ourselves or others is we could take the same situation of drama, whatever it may be, and we notice how we would have reacted to it maybe four years ago to how we are reacting to it now can give us a really clear indicator of where our growth and ascension is at versus another. So something to consider with that, again, we will be noticing this. This is tangible in our reality now, the perspectives that are being held from either 3D or 5D or beyond, right? There's, there's even more than 5D too. So I'm, I'm generalizing for the sake of a point. The next one that they wanted to talk about was we will have continued revelations, but noticeable shifts of positive change within those revelations. So we will still have revelations coming forward, things coming to the surface, things being exposed, but we are also going to be having these beautiful positive shifts of things being revealed, new ways of thought, new ways of corporate industries, um, creating things, whatever it may be, technologies, medical breakthroughs, returning to say plant medicines for many different things like shifts to show where the positive changes are. So sometimes those shifts are going to feel like a tower moment, but again, that's just to knock down the old so that we can see the new, because now we're really stepping into so many more frequencies and essentially the evolution on our planet now is to support the new, the positive changes. Now, the next point Spirit wanted to say for July is very noticeable alignments. If any of you have been watching my card readings or again, the Wednesday mediumship channeling that I do on YouTube, there is a significant theme, especially through the month of June and very much continuing in July is noticeable alignments in your life. So synchronistic things happening to align you in the right place at the right time with the right people for the right things pertaining to your destiny. I've had a lot of my guides coming through talking about um, really helping a lot of people get in alignment with their destiny, that the work that you put in has made a difference and it is now connecting you to your destiny. So big emphasis on that. One of the things they wanted to mention with that is the things that you notice that are falling away, maybe it's certain relationships, certain people, certain patterns, maybe certain coping mechanisms that you used to have, say food was one or shopping was one and you're noticing it changing, allow it to change because those old templates, those old bonds and connections are falling away for a reason because the new alignments are are to be made with new frequencies 
new ways of coping. So maybe your coping mechanism, like I said before, was shopping. And now your new mechanism is to actually turn inward into your body, feel into where you're feeling this disharmony, sit with it for a little bit, get to know it, and move forward. That's radically different than what you did before. Same thing goes with relationships. You have old relationships falling away, and you may feel a void or a lack. Maybe your whole world feels like it got shaken up. But what you're doing is you're making space for the new ones within your alignment right now. So it's a beautiful thing. This is a very beautiful time. Have very noticeable alignments, that Spirit was saying. All right, the next one, Spirit said, is the universe is also in the month of July asking you to act and show up as the next version of you. Action means decisions and decisions mean discernment and discernment comes from you knowing you. So when you know you, you know your resonance, then you will be called to act upon it. So again, if we bring it back to the point before of noticeable alignments, when these alignments are presented to you, you will be asked by the universe to take an action, a yes or no, a moving forward or a boundary will be asked to step into the new version of us, like a 2.0 version, or maybe you're on your 6.0 or 7.0 version of you, is to be acting as that, be that, embody that, and allow that to come through you and take those action steps. Because, again, with momentum and movement, we need to co-create that momentum and movement. And we've had a lot of opportunity in the beginning of this year to clear out a lot of stuff, get to know really what we're about, and now step forward. So the universe is going to be asking us to act and show up as the new version of us. Okay, the next point they said is we will be seeing continued uh, increase in solar flares, um, continued increase in Schumann resonance bursts, if you will, continued solar consciousness coming down. So the time you spend in the sun, the time you spend connecting to earth, um, all of those things will really make a difference in your consciousness when you can look at those experiences as interacting with consciousness, not just the sun and heat, but rather a conscious energy or conscious entity. Same thing goes with the planet. The planet is a consciousness just like we are. And if you compare the planet to us in our human bodies, we would be, humans on the planet would be like the microbes on our bodies. We have microbes all over our bodies doing things, doing different things. But each microbe feels like their individual self on our body, which is also a being. So we are those individual microbes, if you will, on the planet. And the planet is her own energy as well. So there is a lot of energy moving through the planet, but also from the, the sun and solar consciousness all of this is merging and fusing with our energy right now to continue to help us increase our consciousness, increase our uh, ascension into 5D, increase these alignments, increase all of these things. It's all happening together. So if we tap into that as a reality, tap into solar consciousness, tap into earth energy, we become these even brighter beacons. And it's a really beautiful, beautiful thing. So I very much encourage all of you if you can to take some time to connect into those energies and just feel them all right now the next point spirit said as well so with these noticeable alignments we're also going to be noticing um, a continuation of divine union so if we take this concept of alignments and we tailor it directly to divine unions of people and when I asked Spirit this, I said, you know, do you mean coming into greater harmony with self or with Spirit? They said yes, but this point right now, specifically with July, has to do with specific people. So reconnecting or connecting for the first time with specific people. And for many of you, that will be in a romantic way. So these divine alignments of the equal paired opposite to you, whether that's a soulmate, whether that's a twin flame, there's a strong energy right now. And Spirit said to even look to, they said look to the heavens, so look to what's happening, happening cosmically. And Venus moves into Leo, it does a transit through Leo. And every time Venus does that, there are significant moments in relationships, the beginnings of relationships, the endings of one, to start anew, 
the deepening of one, the, the, there's so many. And so right now the emphasis of this Venus, which is the heart space, the rose, love, moving into Leo, which is fiery expression and strength and passion and purpose, are coming into this divine union right now. So for many of you, you will be needing these divine partners in your life to help you move forward in some form, whether that be again in matters of the heart, in romance relationships or business relationships or in something you can create for the world, anything like that, divine unions are really uh, on the table right now. All right, and then the last one they wanted to talk about, number nine, was our use of sound and crystals can really help us to clear our energy. And so that got me really interested. I was like, what do you mean by that? And they said, you will continually need to reset your energy throughout the month of July because with these clear divisions of 3D and 5D, we have all these things happening with ascension, helping us grow and ascend, but there are many triggering murky, muddy things in 3D that have the ability to pull us down. So we will have to kind of continually reset. And they gave me an example of when you go outside and say you're in your garden, and if you're really truly in your garden, you are going to get dirty. You're going to get dirty feet, muddy feet, dirty hands. Um, and that is completely okay because it's part of your experience of being in the garden. But when you come inside, you will want to clean off so that you don't muddy your bed or your floors, right? So that the world that you live in, in your home, your safe space is clean. So it doesn't mean being in the garden is bad. It just means you will clean your body so you don't bring in the dirt where it doesn't belong. So that same sort of idea is we will want to continually cleanse and clear our energy and not in a stressy way. It's, it's the same as how we enjoy taking a bath or a shower because it feels nice and we feel clean. That's it. And it's nice to do regularly. It feels good on the body. It's not you're having a shower or getting clean because you're horrible and you stink and you're ruining everything around you and no one can stand you. It's not, that's not the reason we have a shower routinely. We do it to keep our energy clear, keep our body healthy, all of that. So the same, it's that same idea. This is just a routine type thing. And they said, with this 3D energy, this kind of 3D murkiness, there can be peskiness that comes into our dream state, whether that's a collective energy that kind of seeps in of fear, drama, um, anything triggering. If you have crystals near you or you sleep with your crystals, sometimes if I feel a little off, I'll actually go to bed and hold on to my crystal and I'll just sleep with it. I'll just hold it in my hand. Uh, that may work for you or you may just have it by your bedside, but crystals have the ability to hold a frequency. And so when we connect with that crystal, it has an ability to amplify our desired frequency. So if you pick like um, an amethyst or a Lemurian crystal or a rose quartz crystal, again, all very nurturing crystals to help hold your frequency, then that is an added um, boost for you, right? But the same thing goes for sound. Sound has the ability to clear your energy because sound merges with ether, which is that fifth element. It is the bond between all elements. And music can move through that bond and reconfigure frequencies. And we know this because we just have to look up videos of frequencies where, you know, when they put salt or sugar on a speaker and they play different frequencies and the frequency moves the salt or sugar into different sacred geometrical patterns, right? That is because sound frequency is moving the ether between the particles of salt or sugar and moving it into a pattern, resetting a frequency. So the same thing works for us when we listen to sound or we make sound. If you sing or you hum or a mantra, you're resetting the frequency in your body. And sound is one of the most effective ways. And honestly, if you think about it, if you just hold a note, like say you were to hum a note and you're just like, When you hold it long enough, you feel the resonance, the reverberation in your body, sound. And it's one of the things that one of my guides brought through recently. And she says, you you're missing the point of sound. I'm like, no, no, I understand. I know what you mean about sound. And she's like, no, 
it is the easiest God-given, if you will, creator-given, source-given, natural thing on our planet to change frequencies, change the alignments of elements, change things for healing, for you name it, right? Like it's why birds sing, not just in communication, but their song reverberates through nature and helps certain plants and flowers do different things. Like music is the expression of light consciousness. It's just, it's fantastic. So all to say, using sound can reset your energy. And the most simplest form, it takes me much longer to explain it than to actually do it, is if you're feeling off, make yourself go put on your favorite playlist of songs that make you happy, right? If you maybe want to get grounded, maybe you put on drumming music, but use the power of music that is literally at our fingertips and our phones to reset our energy in the desired frequency we wish. We can use that for focus, We can use that for sleep. We can use that for creativity. We can use it for celebration. We can use it for calm. Like music is this untapped resource that we listen to, but we don't often take it deeper than that. And so that's why Spirit is saying throughout the month of July, as you move through all of these things, as you desire to keep your energy in a higher frequency, allow sound to help you change it because sound permeates all things. And then use your crystals to help you reinforce that desired energy, whether you wear your crystals, bracelets, necklace, pendant, earrings, or they're in your pocket or by your bed. Crystals are a beautiful way to do that. So all to say, there were nine points in that, three sets of threes of the beautiful energy we have coming for July. Again, we've got noticeable changes in 3D, 5D, revelations coming through but in a positive way noticeable alignments the universe asking you to step up into who you are continued solar consciousness continued divine union power of the trinity use of sound and crystals oh and i have one more i forgot one that's funny because they're like just review it one more time i forgot one spirit says last point is many of you may feel isolation But they said, truly, all things are connected. Many of you may feel isolation because sometimes when those pieces are falling away, sometimes when we feel we're sitting in 5D and we can see this perspective, but nobody around us in our group or our family can, and we think, what? Am I the only one here that sees this as this? In those moments of transition from one way of being to another, there is a moment in which you need to stand up and be you, stand taller, which sometimes pulls you out of the crowd. But that's not a bad thing because then that allows you to find the new crowd, the new frequency, or perhaps lead others in the same direction. So again, that's where music can come in too to help you hold your frequency, hold your energy, and recognize the connection between all things. So I will leave that with all of you. Thank you so much as always for joining me. Happy July, everyone. This is just a beautiful month of continued movement. I am beyond thrilled to bring through these insights and information for you. And I really hope it helps feed your soul and be like a beautiful salve to your heart and encouragement for your mind to know that you got this. You are here for a reason and you have everything you need to take the next step, which then leads you to the next step, which leads you to your greatest evolution ever at this point. So thank you all so much for joining me as always. I'm beyond grateful. If you are able, please do rate uh, the podcast. If you're listening on an audio platform, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can just uh, subscribe, hit like, share it if you feel anyone may benefit from this. And again, thank you so much. So have a beautiful July, everyone, and I will see you all next week.